In this video, we will talk about applying principles of loose watercolor painting to a landscape. I took this photo a while ago in the beautiful town of Gigonda in France. And my goal with this painting will be not to let my architectural training take over and turn this into a collection of architectural details, but to paint this landscape in the loose and spontaneous style that I appreciate and strive to achieve in my watercolors. In my mind, I defined five important things that I need to remember while I paint and throughout this video I will share them with you as I paint. Of course I started with an accurate drawing and transferred the outlines of the buildings using a charcoal rub on the back of the reference photo and then I added some details with my pencil because when I start painting I don't want to discover that I messed up perspective or something is not vertical or horizontal that's supposed to be because watercolor is hard enough without worrying about accuracy of the drawing while you paint. And if I had a larger sheet of paper, I would even use a ruler to make sure all my lines are straight. As with many loose watercolor paintings, I will start on a wet sheet of paper. I'm using clean water to prep the paper on my block. It's 300 pound arches, 100% cotton watercolor paper, cold press. And as I start painting, this leads me to the second important thing that I tried really hard to keep in mind is that the initial wash needs to be very light and painting wet on wet definitely helps keeping your colors light and transparent. For some reason, when I start painting landscapes, urban scapes or any subjects that have the sky, I tend to make the sky very dark. And I can see in the reference photo that there is very high contrast between the sky and the buildings. And I know the camera washes out the sky. It was a cloudy day with kind of sun trying to get through the clouds, but still the sky needs to be very light. And I think I'm going to take this that wash all the way down and also paint the shadows on the architecture that will help me find all the shadows on the buildings it will give me a head start on developing my painting so it's easier for me to see what surfaces need to get deeper shadows and which surfaces need to stay in the light When we paint clouds, I recently saw very good advice about painting clouds. They are three-dimensional objects, so they will have, like anything else, they will have a light side, which will be white of the paper, they will have mid-tone, which will be my cobalt blue that I'm applying, and they will have a coarse shadow. It kind of sounds funny on a cloud, but they do have shadows on them, and that's that purple color that I'm applying, the moon glow, that will create the shadow on the clouds, and that's what makes them look three-dimensional, but also light and fluffy and not like solid objects floating in the sky somehow. Mm. good to add a little bit of warmth to the sky. The photo of course doesn't show it but a little bit of lemon yellow or some similar color usually looks good and also I can start painting the warm light on those roofs. They're made of the terracotta tiles so they will need a lot of warm color on them. So working with a large brush and just kind of trying to separate the planes of my subject and create that initial loose wash. If you watched other videos about loose watercolor painting on my channel, if you haven't, check out a few links that I left in the video description below for you. I painted a lot of flowers and you know that usually I try to make the initial wash as intense as possible, but in this case I decided to keep things light and just see how it goes and not force things before they're ready to get darker. I might try a brighter, more saturated version in another video, so stay tuned. I have this 
flowering plant <laughs> in the foreground. When I took the picture, I thought it was really cool how it grows between all those tiles, but now I'm kind of a little concerned how I'm going to paint it. So I will go light as well and try to keep it as abstract as possible without going into many details and then we'll see how it develops. I might have to use some mixed media, maybe some color pencils to paint this. It's very close in tone to the roof. I will have to be careful how I paint it. My initial wash is ready, I let it dry and now I can start giving some definition to my buildings. Again I'm using Moon Glow in combination with Cobalt Blue to give it some variety. I will probably throw in some other colors in there. Definitely will need some oranges in that wash and now I'm trying to work pretty intensely. And what I realized after several attempts of painting architectural subjects, including this subject, I painted this before, is that I cannot show any details in the background. I can see them in the reference photo because the camera flattens the photo, but when I paint, I need to avoid showing the details in the background as much as possible. I am going to add some details, but they need to be very kind of abbreviated so that the background doesn't push forward. It doesn't mean I have to use super light colors or anything like that. You see my colors are pretty intense, but I need to unify everything and simplify everything because those uh, stone arches that I see that's in the very back, they are far away, even though they don't look like it in the photo. And of course, it would have been much easier for me to figure all this out if I was painting there, at least if I would have done some sort of an initial sketch. But I was walking around, I didn't have time, so all I was able to do is snap a photo before I sat down and had some wine. So now I have to work with what I have and kind of keep all these things in mind and kind of paint what I know I need to paint instead of copying what I see in the reference photo. Another thing I realized with architectural subjects is that you have to draw with the brush. I'm standing while I'm painting because I need to have that freedom of movement. I have nothing to rest my wrist on, so I need to move my arm freely to create those straight lines. If the movement is restricted, the lines will start to curve and they start to wobble and it's not going to look right wobbly lines in architectural subject don't look right. And really I'm using a round brush, but actually using a flat brush helps a lot when you need to paint straight lines. But I seem to be managing okay with this round brush and also I can rest my wrist occasionally on the lower portion of my painting. I started on the top, so I'm going down towards the dry portion of paper. as with any subject that we paint it's very important to think about edges. I'm looking at those cast shadows and because it's a overcast day the shadows don't really have hard edges. 
but I might sharpen some of them a little bit and also make that change compared to my reference photo because I might want a little more definition in the shadows to help describe the form and make the painting more three-dimensional and also create more depth of space. Next tip that I have actually comes from my architectural training. I'm going to paint the foreground, the style roof with the plant growing out of it, but I'm not going to paint every single tile. I'm going to strategically distribute my details, those bright orange tiles, and that will give my viewers enough information to imagine that it is a tiled roof. If I define each one of them, it will look like an architectural drawing, not like a watercolor painting. I am going to paint some details. I'm kind of starting on them right now, as you see, but I will keep them to this lower left corner, which is closest to the viewer. And as the roof moves away from us, the details will be less and less defined. let's work on this bush or whatever it is the flowering plant I have no idea what's it called if you know let me know in comments I'm thinking since it's in the foreground I need to make it high contrast so I'm leaving the flowers for the most part as the light initial wash I added a little bit of coarse shadow on the bottom and I'm going to make the foliage pretty dark I'm using cascade green so that it will look like it's in the foreground This layer is dry, I forgot to mention. I used some salt to texture that roof in the middle on the right hand side. I think that turned out pretty well. It showed, kind of created a texture similar to that stone that the building is made of. So my next step will be to add darkest darks, give my architectural details a little definition and add just the right amount of texture and details. small dagger brush it's great for this type of work because I can paint straight lines with it but also I can turn it on the side and paint small details with it or I can paint slightly larger details if I turn it on the side so really versatile tool using a mixture of ultramarine blue neutralized with moon glow and also with some cascade green in it I want to support the plant the green that I used for the plant, I need to have some green somewhere else. So I think it will be good to add it to the walls in the shadows and working really hard not to paint every stone and every tile in those distant buildings. Trying to keep things simplified and unified. So I will create the depth of space that is absent in my reference photo.
let's move to the foreground. This area will have the highest level of contrast and most detailing and texture. And this will be my last tip. First of all, to have a focal point in your painting and to create maximum contrast, maximum detailing and texture in that focal point. When I look at a landscape and especially at architecture, my attention just spreads all over and I want to show everything. But for painting purposes, we really need to have a composition and the composition has to have a focal point. So in my case, it will be this lower central kind of bottom left corner of the painting with that plant and with the tile. And right now I'm working on creating maximum contrast here. And in just a minute, you will see how I will add texture. This is the final stage of my painting. I will be creating texture, the texture of stone and tile. Let's give those tiles a little more warmth, a little wash of yellow. some splattering that will give that roof even more texture. It's kind of the focal point of my painting along with that bush, so it needs a lot of visual interest. So I'm going to splatter some color but trying to only hit the area in that lower left corner of my painting. All right, the last thing I'm going to do, first draw those um, crosses and metal decorations on tops of the roofs. And I'm going to use a blue color pencil because I just don't have a brush small enough to do this. So I'll just use a color pencil. Maybe give a little more definition to some of the details, but of course avoiding drawing solid lines around any of the elements. Just a little touch up in the shadows. Let's use white pencil to give more texture to those tiles in the foreground. And because my paper is so thick, even though it's cold pressed, it's pretty textured. So that white pencil looks really good and gives a good illusion of those clay tiles. You will see the finished painting in just a second. You will be able to see the details a little better. Let me know in comments what you think about this experiment. Would you say this effort can be called loose watercolor painting of architecture? I hope you found some useful information in this video for your art practice and I hope to see you in the next video here on Tamirab Studios channel. Help other artists to see this video by liking or sharing it. To see future videos, subscribe and click the bell button to be notified when they're published. Thanks again and stay creative!